I'm Alan. Uh, my dog's catching a cross platform app. I'll give some uh, context first. So I work on Frappe Books. It's a desktop app. So that means it's not a Frappe framework app because you know that's not desktop and it's no cloud. So if you're wondering why no cloud, uh, dependency on cloud providers and your data is not with you. It's not actually free because you're not dependent on a cloud. And uh, so that, that's a screenshot. Uh, you know, QuickBooks discontinued their uh, cloud service. Uh, of an accounting app that, no, that is their accounting app. So anyways, uh, why desktop? It's the inverse of, you know, why not cloud? So no service provider, uh, you can maintain total privacy, uh, data stays with you, and some apps don't have to be cloud, you know, it can just live on your computer, like a calculator, for instance. So yeah, hypocrisy aside, so yeah, the question that I wanted to ask was, uh, how difficult is it to make a web app a desktop one? Uh, so I've added some code reference. Uh, this is the repo link. Mm. So first part, web app. We start with the front end. Usually you don't start with the front end, but here I'm starting with the front end. It doesn't matter how the front end is made. It's made, you can make it using vanilla.js or Vue.js or strawberry.js, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, Second, you add a server. Uh, I've made a faster server. It's uh, returning dummy data, so it's like reply dots and empty area and you know, uh, just false. <clears throat> so you add a server, you need a database after that. So then here there's a, a class known as database. And I've not added the implementation in details here, uh, but it's just running some SQL, SQLite query and uh, returning the response and that is going to be called by the server. So here you can see that uh, the responses, the get and the post, they have been updated with uh, the database calls. And finally, uh, no, first we run the server and then you can see that you know, it's returning the get response. Then we update the front end, which is basically fetch calls because it's a web app. So it's you know doing fetch calls to the, sending HTTP requests to the server and then that response with the data and then your front end gets updated. Uh, you connect it. And so here, the API caller that's there, uh, that's uh, being stored in this variable called DB, and that's uh, basically what the front end will be using to make these calls, to get data and then yeah, update it, read it, delete it, whatever. Uh, so here, the web app architecture is pretty simple. It's, you have your UI code, then you have API caller, which is uh, the DB variable here. And uh, API caller is going to make fetch requests, and that will go to Fastify. Fastify will get uh, stuff from the database class, which is running SQLite queries. So, and yeah, you have your web app. This is pretty simple. Uh, yeah, part two, desktop app. So, uh, for desktop, I'll, I'm using Electron, which is what Frappe Books is based on. So, the structure is somewhat similar to a web app. So, instead of uh, uh, you doing HTTP requests, you're doing IPC messages, and instead of having a client on a server or a browser on a server, you have this render process and a main process. And uh, the render process basically sends IPC messages to the main process and then that responds to data or uh, vice versa. <clears throat> so the Electron front end, it runs on Chromium and because of that it can run any kind of UI, uh, any kind of web UI. So what runs in the browser runs on the Electron front end and the back end runs on Node.js. So yeah, whatever code your server would be calling, that can be used by the Electron backend. So first, you know, front end as usual, but we already have one, so we use the same thing. Uh, we need to add a desktop backend, so basically this front end, we need to run it as a desktop app. So this is Electron specific code. It's basically lo uh, loading the URL, localhost 3000, which is what's being served here. Uh, wait, I'm pointing at my lab. Okay, no mind. So, yeah, so it uh, it knows uh, it knows which URL to load. Since we're giving it the URL, it load from that URL, and basically you have the front end as a desktop app, but it's not hooked up to a database yet. So we need to send IPC messages. So earlier we were doing HTTP requests using uh, fetch calls. Uh, instead of that, we'll be doing uh, IPC message passing. And for that, we are using these two things known as uh, IPC renderer dot invoke, which is called by the front end and IPC main.handle, which is called by the backend. So I have render.invoke, uh, invoke some functions. So in the top 
code example you can see ipc render dot invoke read and then in the bottom one ipc main dot handle is uh, handling the read call and returning an empty array so uh, this ipc render dot invoke is called from something known as a preload script now that is uh, basically a mechanism that electron uses so that you don't expose everything since uh, electron can access all node apis so if you have access to node apis on your front end and you load like uh, some script that you don't know is completely safe they can wipe out your computer so you use a preload script to prevent things like that uh, and that's basically the last line context bridge dot expose in main world db and that's exposing this uh, variable called invokers in uh, the first code block. And what that does is uh, it attaches DB to Windows. So then uh, your front end, the DB variable that was being called by a web app, uh, you can just uh, point that to window.db and everything else will be the same, as long as you maintain the same API. So here, for instance, uh, invokers has read and update, and their uh, API caller had read and update. So to load the preload script, we just update the electron specific code and we just uh, give it the part to the preload script. And uh, before the app loads the web front end, it will load the preload script and attach uh, DB to window. So, so this is what I was uh, speaking of earlier, that uh, you can just point DB to window.db. If DB is not something, if it's not defined, then that means that it, your app is not running an electron. So the rest of your entire UI code can be oblivious to the fact that it's running on electron, or you know, it doesn't need to know which platform it's running on, basically. So you just need to give it this one particular uh, API that it calls, and that API can have different implementations, uh, depending whether it's on running on the electron or whether it's running in the browser. Uh, so we still need to hook up the database. We already have database.js. So similar to how I updated the the fastify calls. Uh, here I update uh, the IPC main with uh, database calls. So database.read and update. And you can see here the architecture is similar to how the web app architecture was. So only difference is that uh, we have uh, swapped out the API caller with the preload API and uh, the server with Electron. Uh, other than that, the UI code and database remains the same. So finally, we are on the app and uh, we have a desktop app. Okay. So part three, it's basically just wrapping up. So uh, between both the uh, sides, whether you're running on desktop or uh, web, uh, only the connecting code, which is like uh, the central rectangle that you can see is uh, platform specific. So that tends to be very little compared to the UI code. Uh, in most apps, uh, UI code tends to be quite a lot. So Frappy Books has a lot of UI code. Most of it is uh, UI code. So then that entire thing can be reused. And uh, you yeah, basically are targeting multiple platforms because of all of the reuse. Yeah. So yeah, speaking of desktop apps, Frappy Books. It's, it's, so OK. So yeah, uh, Frappy Books is basically a uh, modern desktop accounting app uh, for freelancers and small businesses. Mm, this is what I've been working on since uh, past one year. And uh, here are some features and screenshots. So it can have custom invoices, uh, invoice payments, financial reports, uh, quick search. It's It's like a really stripped down version of ERP Next accounting, but on the desktop. So the current state is that Frappy Books has been in beta since like since it since uh, we started working on it, and uh, now the last version of beta has been downloaded like six thousand times, no nine thousand times. Sorry. So. So uh, since it's been in beta forever, I thought that I'll launch the out of beta version now. And I was basically sitting behind and then typing this out. So basically, yeah, zero point. I'm just going to publish this release. And hopefully, I have internet. OK, I have internet. Nice.
Yeah, so uh, it's out of beta now. <laughs> uh, yeah, upcoming features, it'll be adding multi-currency invoicing, inventory management, like strip down uh, of the stock module and uh, point of sale. So whatever a small business would require uh, for their accounting needs uh, or to run their business, uh, whatever, yeah. So yeah, you can check it out at frappybooks.com. Uh, that's it. Okay.